Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Today we're going to be reviewing the XPS 9500. This is the 15 inch Slim and Light workstation from Dell. Now we're quite late with this review, this has been out for a few months now, and we did have one in a while ago, but I figured the advantage of this review now is it's been out for a little while, hopefully they've sort of ironed out a lot of the bugs with this laptop, because on the first release there was a lot of issues with the trackpad, with throttling, and other little bugs, like DPC latency, that have been causing an issue with this laptop. So now we are up six months in, I would say, with the release of this laptop, and we've got a more mature BIOS and more mature drivers. We're gonna review it today and see how it is now and whether it's still worth buying. So first, let's have a quick look at this laptop. This is a very slim and light 15 inch laptop from Dell. It's made from pretty much all aluminium and magnesium alloy with a soft touch palm rest. So nice aluminium sturdy lid with the Dell logo. That would have been nice if that was maybe an XPS logo. And on the left side, we've got a Kensington lock port and two USB-C stroke Thunderbolt 3 ports. And on the right side, we've got a USB-C port and we've got a full size SD card slot and a headset jack. On the front of the laptop, we have a small light here, which indicates when it's low on battery or when the laptop is charging. So it'll come on yellow when we're low on battery and white flashing when it's charging. Other than that, that's pretty much it with this laptop. So obviously you're gonna be able to dongle life a little bit with this machine, you've got no legacy USB ports and they've made this laptop as thin as possible to make a nice compact machine for like traveling. But they've done that at the expense, as I say, of legacy ports. So there's no USB-C, there's no HDMI, no display port. And that's a bit of a shame. But what they have done to compensate for that, they have included in the box a very tiny little dongle, which is quite nice. It's just got a little fold away USB-C port, uh, an HDMI and a USB port on there. So that's quite handy that they've given you that. Unlike Apple, don't give you anything. You've got to go buy it all at exorbitant Apple prices. Dell have included this in the box and it is a really nice design. Then the other thing that's included in the box is obviously the power adapter. Now again, it's going to be a USB-C because that's the only ports we've got on here, but it's quite a large 130 watt USB-C power brick because this laptop is obviously using an Intel 45 watt CPU plus a dedicated GPU. So you're going to get your normal than standard size USB-C adapter. It's great that they've given you an adapter that can fully power this laptop, but it does mean it's very difficult to use third party adapters. We've tested some other power adapters and it will still work, it will still charge, but you will get a low power warning and you won't get the full potential of the machine. So that is something to take into consideration. So let's take a look at the inside of the laptop. You open it one-handed, it's quite stiff to initially lift the uh, screen up. The model we've got here is the Intel 6 core 12 thread 10750H CPU, which is a 45 watt Intel CPU. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now the good thing with this laptop is they're not soldered on, so you've got two DIMM slots uh, with two eight gigabytes in this case populated, but you can obviously up update that to about 64 gigabytes. This one comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD, and that comes on one of the M.2 slots of which there is two. So when you are low on space, you've got a second slot that you can install a second SSD. That's really quite handy on a machine like this because it is so slim and light for a 15 inch. And if you're used to your apples, then obviously you know everything's soldered on. Once you've bought it, you're stuck with it. At least Dell have been kind enough to give us the opportunity that we can increase the SSDs, we can increase the RAM. Everything else is soldered on though. Now I've chosen to go for the 1200p matte display. The reason that I usually go for the matte display over the glossy, the glossy is obviously a much higher DPI, so a nice looking screen and it's touchscreen. And yeah, that is lovely, but personally, when I'm using a machine and I'm out and about, I much prefer a matte display. They get longer battery life. 1200p I think is fine for this uh, 15 inch size screen. And you can use it outdoors or in other places. It's 500 nits. It's a really beautiful, bright screen that you can use anywhere. And I think if you're buying a laptop, the, the whole point of using a laptop is that you take it with you and you use it. Glossy screens are lovely, don't get me wrong, but then you're constantly, you're trying to get out of the way of uh, the sunshine and so get into the shadows to use it. So this is why I do love the matte. Plus you get that extra battery life. We will be testing the battery life out later in the review. Now one negative. This has obviously been a fair few months since this laptop has been released and I do still have the faulty trackpad. And I thought this was supposed to be ironed out by Dell 
in June. It's still here. So if I press down, you can see that's not clicking. That's just me pressing on the trackpad. I've got to press hard for it to actually click. Now this is really annoying because when you press the thing, you think you've got it, but you've actually you've only done the pre-click and then you've got to do the click. Now I have fixed these before and I have done a video review how to fix this trackpad, so I will fix this one myself. But that's not the point. On a premium machine like this, the Dell QC, this should have been sorted a long time ago. This shouldn't have even come out of the factory initially with this problem. And months on, we are still finding the odd laptop with this pre-click. And I think Dell, they said they'd fixed this in June, they clearly haven't. And I've had other people messaging that say that they clearly have had faulty trackpads. So whenever you're buying these laptops, you do have to be aware of the Dell QC, it is not 100% they do not check everything so I always check every laptop over I receive in anyway. Other than the uh, fact that the, this is a faulty trackpad, it's a really good sized trackpad and it glides really well. You've got all your Windows gestures as you'd expect and it's a really nice trackpad to use so despite the fact that mine isn't perfect once I fix that it will be a fantastic trackpad. We've got a backlit keyboard with a really lovely layout and a nice tactile feel. You've not got a long travel, but it's got a nice pressure, so they do feel great when you type on it. It feels very similar to the uh, Apple Magic keyboard, certainly much nicer than the Apple Butterfly keyboard. We also get a fingerprint reader with this model, and Windows Hello. So you're getting all the premium features of a decent uh, premium laptop in this model. We've also got up and speakers, and they sound great. They're nowhere near Apple MacBook Pro 16 quality, but there is no other laptop like that for sound. But every other XPS I've, I've heard were always average on the sound. This one is fantastic. Quite happily typing away, listening to a bit of YouTube music in the background, and I can put up with it. Obviously, if I wanted to listen to music seriously, I would put a pair of headphones on anyway. But just for listening to podcasts and other bits and pieces, they are really good speakers. The only thing I'm not so keen on is the WaveMax software that they give with you. But this is what Dell's been doing for years. It does create a few latency issues. But unfortunately, you know, until Dell changed their ways with this uh, Wave Max, we're stuck with it. So now that we've looked at the aesthetics and the usability of this laptop, let's look at the performance on it. Now, obviously, Dell have done everything they can to make this a slim and light laptop, and that is great. Uh, it's a nice, decent sized 1200-piece uh, screen, so great for productivity. The keyboard's great. But what about the internals? As I said, I've got the six-core, 45-watt Intel CPU with a discrete GPU. I ran Cinebench on this laptop, and on the standard profile I scored 2442. That's not a bad score for this processor. It's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. Uh, I've also found that you included with the laptop is the Dell Thermal Management, and you can change from the default optimized to ultra performance. It didn't really add a lot of difference in performance. The only thing that is quite nice is you have a cool and a quiet option, and those will reduce the wattage to the actual uh, CPU and make the laptop cooler. But we're not going to look at those at the moment, we're just looking at the pure, normal, out-of-the-box performance. So 2,442 Cinebench score, now that seems pretty good. And that is good, providing you don't use discrete GPU. Because as soon as you do anything that fires up the discrete GPU, the system then starts throttling that CPU. And I found very often it's throttled down to 20 watts whenever the GPU is running. So instantly, my Cinebench score's going down, benchmarks are going down. So it's a very interesting thing. I think most people will just review these, they'll run a CPU benchmark and can say, yep, yeah, that's fine. But it's not. You'll notice it whenever you're gaming, that CPU is going to drop down to about 20 watts. So this is a great casual machine and for casual gaming, perfect. You know, it's great for straight CPU, but don't expect an extremely heavy workhorse of a machine that is going to be running flat out on CPU and GPU for gaming and modeling and rendering. This isn't that laptop. It is a beautiful laptop. It does have great battery life. It's got lovely usability keyboard screen speakers. It's not, you know, a dedicated workstation or gaming laptop. So talking about the actual discrete uh, 1650 Ti graphics card, it came through with a times by score of 3840 and a fast rate score of 8543. So again, both respectable scores for the actual hardware configuration. It's just the fact that that CPU is throttled when you are running these things. I'm going to pop a couple of games at the end uh, with MSI Afterburner running and we're going to have a quick look at that behaviour. Okay, so I'm just going to play a bit of Apex Legends. I'm running at the native 1200p 
uh, pretty much medium sort of settings. And we can just shoot into a match, see how it performs. So I've been in the game for a little while now. You can see the fans are pretty quiet, which is nice. But the biggest problem is the CPU is throttled right down. So in this game, obviously the frames per second are still pretty good. They're about 80 odd frames, 90 frames per second, so that's not bad. And the GPU is sitting at about 40 to 50 watts. So the GPU side of things is brilliant. But the CPU is obviously throttled to keep that GPU at a higher power level. So this proves that it's obviously fine for playing casual or uh, eSports sort of titles. It's when you get some heavier CPU titles that you're going to see a, a difficulty with this machine. But the one lovely thing about it is obviously it's not noisy, which is good because gaming laptops can be often really noisy. And also, it doesn't get hot on the keyboard. This keyboard is only warm, so it's quite comfortable keeping your fingers on the keyboard. So from that respect, it's pretty good. Okay, so that's the performance done. Uh, we will be doing more games or running more games on this laptop. What we want to do in a forthcoming video, we want to do a few more games and then we're going to try connecting it to an eGPU and see how it runs with an eGPU. Reason being is as soon as you engage the graphics card on this machine, it throttles down the CPU as we talked about earlier. So I want to see if having an, an eGPU on there solves that problem and you still get some decent performance. So that will be coming in an upcoming video. So please uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see that. Now when we talk about battery life for this machine, I did some YouTube streaming, just some music at 50% brightness for a couple of hours and it used about 17% of the battery. So working that out, it's about 10 and a half hours of YouTube streaming on this laptop, which is really quite good. Obviously this is the 1200p panel, so you're going to get better battery life on this one than you would do on the 4K. So for light use, you're easily talking a whole day's battery life on this machine. So let's sum this up then. Visually, this is an absolutely beautiful laptop. The infinity bezels, the great keyboard deck and lovely touchpad. If you get one that isn't, you've got the dreaded drift. It's a really solid build construction, it's good heft. Yeah, it's, you know, portable enough. You can chuck it in. It feels more like you're carrying a 14 inch laptop and not a 15 because of the such narrow bezels. It has the fingerprint reader. It has Windows Hello. It has a full-size SD card reader for anybody that's uh, using a digital camera, that's still really, really handy. But it does only have three USB-C straight Thunderbolt ports. Now they're great, they are the ports of the future, but in all honesty, I still do prefer having some legacy ports because they do include the dongle and that is really handy, but you still have to remember to chuck that in your bag every time or, you know, you happen to be out and about on site or, you know, somewhere where you need this and you've forgotten it, it's really frustrating. In the next year or two, maybe we'll get to a point where everything is uh, USB-C or USB-4 or whatever they're, they're coming up with in the time, and then maybe we can all move to one port. But for the time being, I still do like my legacy ports. But other than that, this is a fantastic machine. It's not a dedicated gaming laptop, as you saw from the, the Apex performance that we did earlier on. As soon as you are loading that 3D uh, graphics card up, you're throttling down that CPU. Uh, I think it's been the same for the last couple of biases, so I don't see Dell changing anything soon. The lovely thing is though, it stays nice and quiet. It doesn't get overly hot on the keyboard deck and it did play the games well still. Even at only 15, 20 watts, it was still playing Apex well over 60 frames per second. This is only a 60 hertz panel, so it was okay. It's just obviously if you're used to a gaming laptop and you're used to the, the CPU running at 40 odd watts whilst you're gaming, this isn't a laptop for you. This is a sort of an all purpose work laptop that you can have a couple of games at the end of the day. And it does excel at that. So if you are looking for a sort of a work laptop in that sort of category, this is definitely a fantastic package for you. 
I'd say it's definitely a, a better package than the current X1 Gen 3, which has seemed to have stagnated for the last couple of years. And it is very similar to package all round as a MacBook Pro 16. They've both got their pros and cons. So in conclusion, would I buy this laptop? I would definitely buy this laptop. And I would definitely buy the 1200p screen because personally, I love the anti-glare. I love the extra battery life. But I know a lot of people do like that 4K panel. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe and hit notification bells if you'd like to see more content than this and the other laptops we have on the way. Thank you.